We are the champions. My friends, it's Gavster here. And um, we're going to be reviewing Group A. So, yeah. Remember to tune in to the Euro 2020 Boys Instagram Live and YouTube Live um, on uh, tomorrow for uh, the greatest game of all time, Turkey against Italy, and to stay up to date on all the Euro 2020 news. So, as I said, we're going to be reviewing Group A, which consists of Italy, Wales, Switzerland, Turkey. Uh, very impressive teams. Teams that, you know, I say teams that could really go far in this tournament. So um, I have my little book here, as you can see, a very nice price for thirteen euro ninety nine. That's gonna help me along the way. So um, let's go. So I've decided that I'm going to make my predicted lineups. For each one of these teams. And as you know, this could be a lot different on the final match day because of injuries and, you know, coronavirus. All that nasty, nasty stuff. So here is my, uh, let's say, Swiss Swiss team. Right here. Um, So I don't have it in front of me, but I put Jan Sommer in goal. Uh, Kanji and Mbabu as centre backs and a lot of other people but I don't have it in front of me as I said so yes so um yeah right up here I have my predicted Welsh team and um, Gareth Bells is in it yeah here I have my predicted Italian team it's very nice incredibly nice Italian team and here's my Turkish team up there. So, yeah. So, now I'm going to make the all-round group predictions. I think that um, the top score in this group, it's a very good question. I think it's going to be Cyril Mabaili. He's been on fire for Lazio this season. And I think he could score a good few goals, especially considering I think they're going to be getting through the least goals conceded. I think that could be another story. I think that could be between Donnarumma or Jan Sommer. Very interesting scenes indeed. So as I said at the start, this group is kicking off tomorrow, the 11th of June, at, uh, I'm pretty sure it's 8 o'clock, but here it says 9 o'clock. But, um... Yes, yeah, so um, this group's going to be taking place across Rome in Italy, of course, Italy, uh, in Italy, playing in Italy, which is very nice. And um, then Baku, which is a place in Azerbaijan. Um, yeah, I'm going to pop up the stadiums here. Here's the stadium in Rome. Not sure the capacity. You know, it's in this book. Give me a minute. Okay, so... Oh uh oh, now we're all right. So the venues, um, so Rome. It says, um, a sixty-nine, a sixty-eight thousand capacity. Uh, it also is going to be hosting the quarterfinals, which is very, very impressive. I'm very impressed with you, Rome. And in Baku, well, that's the Oli Olimpico, uh, the one in Rome. That's the one in Rome and the Baku Olympic Stadium with 69,000 capacity. It's also going to be hosting the quarter final. Um, so, yeah. Now, road to qualification. Um, so, Italy, I'm very sure they were in a six team group. Yes, they're in Group J with it, them themselves, obviously, Finland, Greece, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, and Armenia. And Liechtenstein. Um, obviously, they finished top, and actually, they did so well that um, they won every single one of their games uh, with thirty points and a thirty-three goal, goal, goals, goal, goal difference, goal difference. Uh, Finland came second in that group, a good bit behind them at eighteen points. A very 
good result though for the Finnish national team. And then Greece came behind them with 14 points and so on and so forth. But it doesn't matter about them. Now we move on to Wales. They were in Group E with Croatia themselves, of course, Slovakia, Hungary and Azerbaijan. Did finish on that order with Croatia going top with only 17 points, which I'm pretty sure is the joint lowest amount of points um, that got to the top of their group. And um, then they obviously came second with 14 points, three points behind the Croats. Switzerland, as we painfully know, were in our group, Group D, in which we should have finished first, but uh, due to a points difference as we cheated because Dave McGoldrick is too good to um, be allowed to play football, uh, we got reducted points and came third. Um, but they obviously finished top with 17 points. Uh, they were obviously the other group. They were the other team that got the least amount of points and still finished top with the Croats and Denmark then and then after the rest it was Georgia and Gibraltar. Now Turkey, they were also in a six team group. They were with France themselves, Iceland, Albania, Andorra and Moldova. Now uh, France uh, came first obviously but may I add Turkey were not that far behind. They actually finished second with two points in the difference. And that just shows you how this Turkish team may come out and rock the show at the Euros. Because that is definitely a very impressive uh, qualifying campaign when you're only finishing two points behind the French. And sticking with Turkey and their qualifying campaign, uh, Turkey conceded the least amount of goals in their qualifying campaign with only three in the whole 10 games that's the joint lowest that qualifying campaign with the belgium the belgians my pronunciation is very good today sticking on the trend of turkey let's do a quick team review obviously you've seen the team that's it there uh, in this it says that um this is the fifth time in seven tournaments that they've qualified and they did reach the quarterfinals in 2000 and the semi-finals in Austria and Switzerland. But um, they did also they have a new coach, uh, Senol Guns. Uh, very nice man. He's very kind. And um, he also was a Turkish international. It says here that the player to watch out for is Sank Tossen. But uh, I'm pretty sure he might be injured, and if not, he just didn't get called up because um, he isn't in the team. Uh, so I'm going to say the player to watch out for, not the best player on the team, but the player to watch out for would have to be Unal. I think he's a very, very impressive youngster. Now, moving on to the group favourites, Italy. Um, they finished runners-up twice since 2000, and um, they haven't actually won the Euros, surprisingly, since 1968, in which they hosted it that year. Um, their player, they say, to watch out for, again, not the best player on the team, but the player they say to watch out for is Jorginho. I would agree. I think he can really have his day, you know. I think he could be a um, very good player. Also, did you know Italy's win against Liechtenstein back in March in 2019 was actually their first 6-0 uh, win in 57 years uh, before that they beat in, beat in Turkey 6-0. But that, again, that was back in 1962. Now we're moving on to Wales. Um, to be fair, as it says here to Wales, they have become regulars at... Um, the Euros, especially in recent times with really good players, international and more so European, like, how do I say this? Just magical, magical European level players produced such as Gareth Bale, um, David James, Aaron Ramsey, um, all these very good players playing at very good clubs. Um 
they it says in this that they have Ryan Giggs, but something happened with Ryan Giggs recently. So um yeah. And did you know uh founded in 1976 the Football Association of Wales is the third oldest national association in world football behind of course England and Scotland. It says here the star player or the player to watch out for would be Aaron Ramsey. Um hasn't really been uh hasn't really been on show recently since his kind of world class move to Juventus in which I think everyone was very over hyping him and that's why they signed him. But um let's see how he does this year. Now um next last but definitely not least Switzerland. Um they have this is the first no, in 2016 in France was the first time that they went further than the group stage. But um they're still yet to win a knockout match uh under their coach Vladimir Petkovic. Um the player to watch out for again is gonna be Jan Sommer this time, a very, very good goalkeeper. Getting on an age a bit, but still a regular with the Swiss national team and his club and at club level with Munchen Gladbach. Now on to me predicting the matches. The first from Turkey against Italy. I think uh Turkey will be looking at this type of game and going, you know, maybe we could snatch a win from the Italians, but I still have to go with Italy winning this 2-0. Next up is Wales against Switzerland, and this time I'm predicting a Wales loss um, against the Swiss. I think it should be a comfortable one for Switzerland. I do think Wales are going to snatch a goal, and I think it's going to end up 1-3 to the Swiss. Now, Turkey v Wales, I think this could be a very, very interesting game. I think both teams have a sec. I'm very, very, very sorry about that, lads. But Turkey against Wales, I think, again, could be a very interesting game. As I said, both teams have their weaknesses. I think Turkey have a big weakness on the full-back positions and somewhere around the top, I think more so the full-back positions, I think Wales have a bit of a leaky defence and not a great forward line in uh, Roberts. But... I think this game, I think it's fair to say, will end up being a nil-all encounter. Now, Italy against Switzerland. Um, I think this is going to be Italy's biggest game. I think they're going to be looking at this as uh, Switzerland as probably their biggest rivals to come top. Uh, and I'm predicting Italy just about edge it, maybe a bit of a later goal in a 1-0 win for the Italians. Now, Italy against Wales. I think Italy should be able to comfortably win this. I think they're going to beat Wales 3-0. And uh, the final game, Switzerland against Turkey. I think this is going to probably be the most important game for both teams. I think Switzerland will probably just about win by, say, a goal. Go, yeah, that's fair. So, if you have a very good mathematical, no, mathematical, math, mathematical brain, you will have figured out the the predictions for my group, which I did in the last video. I am going to be sticking with them in this group. I think Italy. I think everyone will say Italy are going to come top. I think Turkey and Switzerland is a bit of a mashup, but after looking at the Turkey team to be called up, I think they have a decent two centre backs, a decent ish goalkeeper, decent wingers, but still, I think they're very patched up. I think they are going Turkey. I think are going to come third, which means Switzerland come uh, second and Wales last. Wales and Turkey drawn on um, points, but. Uh, Turkey winning goal difference. So, um, yes, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video because if you did, that means that I enjoyed making the video. I'm very happy that you're here and uh, I hope you all have a great weekend watching the footy. Remember, 
we are going to be live streaming the first game of this group tomorrow. Oh my god, tomorrow! Can't believe it. Uh, and uh, on Instagram and maybe on YouTube, depends on how it works out. So um, yeah. Bye bye. Oh.